Hey, what's going on, wonderful people? It's Jerry Travis Smith back with you again with another tech video. And ever since Windows 11 launched, I've seen on forums, on YouTube videos, that 11 is slower than Windows 10. In all cases, it seems like 11 is slower. Now, here's the thing. When Windows 11 first launched, the 12th generation Intel chips, with the hybrid architecture where you have efficiency cores and performance cores hadn't been released yet. Well, the 12th gen chips came out, and I've been curious if the thread director feature of Windows 11 that Windows 10 doesn't have can actually make 11 perform better on 12th generation Intel chips. I didn't have a 12th gen platform to test on, though, until I got this bad boy. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad T14 with a uh, Intel i5 in it, and it shipped with Windows 10 Pro. So I ran a bunch of benchmarks, and then I upgraded the machine to Windows 11, and then I ran some more benchmarks, and now we can compare the results. How did it turn out? Well, the results were kind of a mixed bag. Windows 10 won a few, Windows 11 won a few. The differences, with the exception of one test that you'll see in a minute, were pretty negligible, actually. So let's get into the specifics and you can see the numbers for yourself. Our test bench Lenovo T14 has a 12th gen Intel Core i5-1235U processor. It's the first x86 chip that I have any experience with that has two performance cores and eight efficiency cores. This is all kind of new to me. It's paired with Intel Iris Xe graphics and there's 16 gigabytes of system RAM running at 3200 megahertz. I ran all the tests using the balance power profile. Now, before everybody starts screaming, you have to change it to the performance profile. Just note that a Nantech reports that most of the thread director's magic gets disabled when you're running in the performance power profile. And doing a benchmark where this thread director is disabled kind of defeated the purpose of what I wanted to know. Because I'm curious if Windows 11 actually makes use of the P cores and E cores in a different way than Windows 10. Very importantly in my testing, I don't look at battery life at all in this. I had the laptop plugged into mains power the whole time. Intel's hopped up the battery life gains of these 12th gen chips, but I didn't have time to do this kind of testing, and I may come back and revisit that eventually. So we'll start our testing with the Unigen benchmarks. Now I know a lot of you are going to say these are more graphically focused tests, but the Unigen tests show how the GPU and CPU work together. Considering that the Iris Xe graphics are built into the chip, I think there's a lot of value in looking at these Unigen benchmarks. On the oldest test, which is the Heaven benchmark, Windows 11 comes out on top by 3%. Windows 11 didn't have time to get too excited because in Unigen Valley, it was 28.4% slower than Windows 10. This margin of error was so shocking compared to everything else that I experienced with all the benchmarks that I reran Valley three times and got nearly identical results. I'm not really sure what's up with that, but clearly there's some scenarios where Windows 10 is indeed much better. And for the last Unigen benchmark was the newest and most challenging. The Superposition benchmark ran 4.3% slower on Windows 11. Next up, we moved on to Geekbench 5, which has GPU and CPU benchmarks. On the GPU benchmark, Windows 11 was 1.4% slower. On the Geekbench 5 single core test, it was within the margin of error between Windows 10 and Windows 11. And on the Geekbench 5 multi-core test, which I thought Windows 11 would really shine in, it only came out 2.9% faster than Windows 10. So it got a win, but not by much. Now our last set of benchmarks came from PC Mark 10. Windows 11 took the lead in both of the tests. On the basic test, Windows 11 was 2.9% faster. And on the extended test, Windows 11 was a half a percent faster. So there you have it. What can we conclude from all this? Well, basically either Thread Director isn't finely tuned yet, the drivers just aren't ready yet, 
or software has to be very specifically written to take advantage of the split architecture and the thread director in Windows 11. I don't really have an answer for you on that account. I don't know. But what I can tell you is, I don't particularly like Windows 11. Um, I think they stripped out a lot of stuff in the GUI that I have come to expect from Windows for the last 30 years of using it. That being said, I always root for any company to be able to come out with something faster and more efficient. I appreciate performance. So let's hope Microsoft can eventually get this right. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, a like, and if you really like this video, go ahead and subscribe. That way you can catch more of my tech content. And sometimes I post some random stuff, but most people seem to enjoy it. So thanks for watching, and until next time, you guys have a great day.